and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about one of the, if not the most asked question that I get both on my YouTube and my Instagram. What snake is the best beginner snake? So hang on in there because today I'm gonna go in depth with the top five best beginner snake in my opinion. I have owned all of these five different types of snakes so this is my experience with them that I am now sharing with you guys. A quick summarize of the five different types of snake, the milk snake, the corn snake, the California king snake, the ball python and the boa. I know usually the boa is not on the top five beginner snake but I'm gonna put it there anyway and you're gonna know why later. Let's start out with the first one, the milk snake. The milk snake is very much like the corn snake and the California king snake. The big difference of them is that they don't grow as big as the two others. Milk snakes only grow to be a maximum of 150 centimeters. Usually they're very calm, they're very docile, they have beautiful patterns, especially this red, white and black one is a very well-known pattern when it comes to milkshakes. Milkshakes. <laughs> milkshake milk snakes sorry guys it is a very well-known pattern when it comes to milk snake the milk snake as well is very forgiving when it comes to terrarium setup in the terrarium it doesn't require much more than a hide a water bowl and a heating source the heating source can either be a heating mat or it can be a light bulb either way which one you prefer that was the milk snake if you want the snake that doesn't grow that big have a beautiful pattern docile temperament you should go for that one very very good snake there isn't that much difference between male and female well, they are pretty much just the same. I can definitely recommend that one. The next one I want to talk about is the corn snake. And as you may have noticed, I just bought Queenie. I have had an adult corn snake at one time as well. And I have to say that this corn snake really had my utmost respect. Whenever I was handling it, it was very, very docile. Of course, it was a bit more active than some of the other snakes, but it was very, very docile, very curious. And it was really, really nice to have a snake that was also active in the terrarium. I really, really enjoyed that it was actually out and doing stuff, whereas some snakes like the boa and the ball python mostly just prefer to hang around and just chill. So the good thing about a corn snake, same with milk snake, is that they are very well known as very good eaters, which means that none of them has ever ever refused a meal, even when they're in shed. Usually uh, snakes in general will refuse meal when they're in shed, but these guys never ever did. They're very very good eaters. The big difference between the corn snake and the milk snake, it's not that big but it's there, is the size. The corn snake can grow up to 180 centimeters. So that's a 30 centimeters difference. Of course, there are some corn snakes who does not grow as big, but that's the, the maximum size. Also, you can get corn snakes in various, various different colors and patterns. There are different kinds of morphs in corn snakes. All of them are looking absolutely beautiful. If you go for the normal one, the wild type, the one that Queenie is as well, commonly very, very cheap to get. The corn snake, same as the milk snake, does not require that much from a terrarium, a hide, a water bowl, and something to climb in. I have noticed that Queen really Really did enjoy crawling around in the terrarium having something to do. They are quite active snakes and if you want to have something to look at more then you should definitely also go for a corn snake. The corn snake same with the mill snake is that when they grow they don't get too big around around the whole body. They do grow to be quite long but they're not as big around the body as the ball python and the boa. So if you want to go a big snake but not that not too heavy then a corn snake is definitely a good choice for you. Also same with the milk snake in the terrarium the corn snake does not require lighting you can go with a heat mat if you like that but you can also go with a lighting source if you find that that is is more nice the third one I want to talk about is one of my personal favorites is the California king snake I really really like that these guys because in nature they're pretty pretty badass which means that they eat rattlesnakes if that is not badass then I don't know what is these guys can grow a little bit bigger than both the corn snake and the milk snake they can reach up to 190 centimeters that is almost two meters that is a very very long snake but as the two others it doesn't get too big and it doesn't get too heavy so again it's a very very long snake but not that big so if you want to go something a little bit bigger than the two other guys you definitely go for a California king snake this is the Californian king snake like I've talked about before this is going to be here she's not fully grown but this will give you a pretty good idea the size of them of course she does get a little bit longer and she gets a little bit fatter <laughs> around the entire body but not that much so this is pretty much the size you're looking at when you 
you're looking at a California king snake. The same with the corn snake, same size, same length. They're almost identical, the two of them. The milk snake, of course, is a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner. The setup in the terrarium, pretty much the same as the two other guys. A hide, a water ball, something to crawl in, and you can choose either a heating mat or a light bulb. They do perfectly well with both of them. You can also have them in rack. My guess is that when you're looking for your first time snake, you really want to, to do something with the terrarium and you're not looking for a snake to have in a rack. But that is also an opportunity. All of these three snakes I've mentioned before can also go on newspaper as a substrate. You can choose something like Repsi Bark like, um, and make a beautiful terrarium. I absolutely love when people are making terrariums looking natural and beautiful. I used to do that, but now we have so many snakes, so it's much, much easier for me to put them on newspapers because I can clean them much, much faster. All of the three snakes that I've mentioned before, they are very, very docile. They're easy to handle. They're good eaters, all of them. They're very forgiving when it comes to setup, which also means if your heat isn't exactly on point, they won't mind that much. They're really, really easy to care for. They're beautiful looking. They grow to be a, a good size without getting too big. They're not known for being aggressive, not at all. If you disturb them or if you scare them, of course, they can get a shot. They are very easy to read when they're angry because their tail will do like a flickering with the tail, like a rattlesnake does, which pretty much means you're scaring me back off. Even though I have owned all three types of these snakes, I've only been bitten one, and that was the milk snake. The reason why he bit me was because I bought him from someone who was keeping him under the wrong conditions. So this snake was severely stressed. He was really, really stressed and he was scared, and when I took him out, he bit me in the finger. He let go immediately after. It doesn't hurt, not at all, <laughs> but there was a little bit of blood. But all in all, these guys, they're so docile. I've never ever been bitten by any of the others. When I got the milk snake home and he de-stressed, never ever shown any anger and he's never bitten me ever since. So these guys, they're pretty good and they are my number one recommendations for your first snake. type of snake that I'm going to recommend you is the bull python. The bull python is an amazing snake and it's often recommended as number one best beginner snake. I'm not gonna put it as my number one and there's a very specific reason why and that is the feeding strike. Bull pythons are notoriously known for this feeding strike. The feeding strike is very very stressful both for your snake but also for you as an owner. Of course it's not every bull python that goes into a feeding strike. I have seen plenty of people having bull pythons as first pet without experiencing this feeding strike, so of course it is possible. But bull pythons, they really do require for you to do your research. They are not that forgiving as the milk corn snake and the California king snake when it comes to setup, which means that your heating, your humidity, basically everything really has to be on point. You really, really have to make everything as good as perfect for them in order to thrive. Also, the other three kinds of snakes are much more forgiving when it comes to handling, and they don't get that stressed easily. Whereas the bull python really can be stressed you handle them too much. As a snake owner, I really do understand the need for handling. I absolutely do. I love handling my animals, but I really do try to remember that it is for my amusement. A snake does not necessarily enjoy being handled. Bull pythons, they can very, very easily be stressed. A stressed bull python is the most difficult thing to bounce back from. Of course, every bull python is different. I really do experience a lot of different types of, I don't want to say personalities in bull pythons, but it's very clear to say that I can definitely see that they are all individuals, they are all different. But that is also a very, very good thing, which means that you get a very unique snake if you buy the ball python. Also, of course, there is the morph types. You can get them in all sorts of colors and patterns, and they're really beautiful looking, and in general, they have a very, very cute face. They don't look too angry or too frightening or too scary. They, in general, have this very, very sweet look to them. If you've done your research, and if you're prepared to, to leave your ball python alone as much as possible, not saying that you can't handle, of course you can. You have to be prepared that your ball python can be stressed and may go into this feeding strike, which means that you have to leave it alone. But if you're prepared for that, and if you're prepared for giving it the most perfect conditions that you possibly can, then a ball python is definitely good for you. Also, the ball python, contrary to the two others, it does get kind of big. Not only does it get long, it gets up to 180 centimeters. That is almost two meters, so that's a big snake, but it also gets more bigger around the body, so it's more 
heavy and it definitely looks bigger than the Californian king snakes even though they are the same length. So if you fancy a snake with a bit more size to it then you should definitely go for the ball python. The fifth snake that I want to recommend ish is the boa and the reason why boas in general are not recommended as your first time snake is because they can have a bit more of a temper and they do grow to be very very big. Boas in captivity can grow to four meters. I have never ever seen one in captivity that big. The largest one I saw was three and a half meters but that is a big snake. Baby we have here she's a little over two and a half meters and she is a big girl. And the reason why they're not recommended as first time snake is because when you buy one as a hatchling they are very small, they are very cute, they're not that big but they do grow into this massive massive size and you have to be prepared for that. Not only is it a big snake, it's a heavy snake, they also do need quite a lot of space. Contrary to the bull python who also gets big but they do much much better in a smaller terrarium. But the boa does really need some space so you also have to be prepared to get a pretty big terrarium when your little baby boa grows into be big. I would recommend boas as a first time snake for people who's been around snakes before, who may have had friends or family who's had snakes or who has friends or family that has boas that can kind of like guide them. I have seen many people choose a boa as their first time snakes with great success. It is possible. You really, really have to do your research on these guys. You can get them in various colors and patterns as well. They are usually pretty docile. They can get pretty, pretty angry. If you've never ever dealt with snakes or reptile before, the boa is not the best one for you to go as your first snake. But if you've dealt with reptiles before, you have friends, family who has them and you've done plenty of research, then yes, you could go a boa as your first time snake. Just don't go out and buy one that's two meter long. Go for a smaller one, go for like a hatchling or a one year old, because that way you can slowly getting used to a snake getting bigger and bigger. Alistair is two years old and as you can see, there is a pretty, pretty good size comparison. So two years old and only a couple of months old. If you've never ever dealt with a snake before, a snake that is two meters long and aggressive, that is a pretty, pretty big challenge and it's not fun at all. Not for anyone, not for you, not for the snake. Boas are slow growers, so as I said before, it will give you plenty of time to grow with it and getting used to it being that big. So yes, under the right circumstances, I would recommend a boa as a first time snake. All right guys, that's all for today. I really do hope you enjoyed these videos on my top five beginners snake. As usual, if you have any comments or questions, just put them right down below in the comments section. Also, please give the video a like so I know that you like what I make. It really does mean a lot to me. And while you're at it, just hit subscribe on that channel. As usual, you can find me on Instagram under the name Jesus Jungle. Thank you guys for now and bye bye.